Hello everyone, Crane here, and I'm back playing Everlasting Summer. I'm sorry that I've been uh, absent a couple days. I just didn't have any motivation to do the videos uh, on these past few days because I've been busy with other other important things like uh, helping out my mom and yeah but now I'm back and we are going to continue this everlasting summer part 2 yeah exactly that kind of the bus which takes you to the places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep <laughs> I give her a nervous chuckle <laughs> it came out by, by itself Sporad sporadically because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh but where on earth is the driver I cautiously sat down on the curb beside the bus and started to wait and yes I have my uh, washing machine um, on so I might take a little uh, break at one point to put my clothes to dry so yeah <clears throat> my patience didn't last long my anxiety seemed to have reached its peak and I started to go slightly mad in such situa situation if anyone would have probably felt something similar Aliens and parallel, parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void of darkness. Void and darkness, sorry. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things that I had no time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea. This was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. God, why? Hmm. Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled, curled up and started trolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of pioneers and a bird on a tree which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in, in its own bird language as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt after its after dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly, sobbing occasionally. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit as if terror and fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment either. If this is just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, now it seems there's no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course the blood was still pounding on in my temples. And my hands were still shaking. But at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there's nothing I can change really anyway so no matter how much I think or how mad I get it would only make things worse until some actual facts appear there's no really no point in making guesses I don't know well, yeah I know my accent is thick deal with it I can't really help my accent you know in any case, I won't learn anything by lounging about here. This camp, if, of course, it is really a camp, 
looked like the only place where people called me, so I decided to, decided to go there and hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them, wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 21st century. And then again, a girl here. I froze, unable to take a step. I felt very much like running away. Running as far away as I could run from this place. Far from this bus, gates, statues, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. Just running, free like a wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by, winking at the galaxies. Running becoming a pulsar ray and turning into vest vestigial radiation, running to face to the unknown. Ah, oh my god. My enter button on my numeric keyboard seemed to be stuck at times, so. <laughs> yeah. Run no matter where, as long as it is far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. <laughs> I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts were independent of consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes, the remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life. <laughs> In particular, uh, let's see. Yeah, go away, please, the notification, thank you. In particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. I desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from the en encyclopedia. <sighs> we know that you're playing Team Fortress Wind Renegade, thank you. Though my thoughts appeared one on one, being stupid out of place, as if taking from internal monologue of the hero of some chunky soft co cover crime fiction book. In a pretty slavic face, long braids and looked like two armfuls of fresh hay and blue eyes you called drown in. Hi, you must have just arrived. Um, I will continue from this point onwards soon. I have to go check my, uh, check my washing machine if it stop, um, Passing the clothes, and I'll be right back. So, see you soon. And I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Let's let's reply to her. Um, yeah. All right then. Welcome. She smiled proudly. Proudly. Um, sorry if this there's this uh, black bar here. Um. My computer seemed to be bugged on uh, on certain uh, situations when I paused the recording or restart it or yeah, so that happens. <laughs> Strange, it looked like as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. Ugh, I should have returned here. I shouldn't re have returned here. The woods and the fields seem better, better. But what should I do next? Should I speak with her as if she was a human? Or run away? Or what? The blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more, and the poor p pioneer girl would have been splattered with the gruesome contents contests of my skull. Uh, what's so funny about that? The girl looked over me. It sent shivers down my spine, and my knees started to tremble. N -n 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 Nothing? Great then. 
great? What's so great about that? Suddenly a thought crossed my mind. To hell with it all. Forget about the bus behind me, the fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today. I wanted to trip, rip off my itchy sweater and just accept that all this is actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All this for the best. What do you happen to know? You shall go to our camp leader. She, she'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead from the square, then turn left. You see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates as if I knew what was behind them. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna's cabin is. <laughs> Dmitrievna is a is a patronymic, a deriv derivative of person's father's name, in this case, Dimitri, put by Russians after the person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. I... Um, got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I gotta go now. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared throughout the gates. It seemed as if for her I was something ordinary. All this show with the bus and travelers while awake or asleep were troubling me only to me. Well, everything here, it's, it's just the way it's supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform. What? Are they doing historical reenactment re re here? Wow. What a word for me to try out the spell. I'm sorry. Um, I have to say, for starters here before I go any further, that my English is basically self-learned. Self and I've learned my English by watching uh, several movies and TV series that are that has the uh, English talking constantly, so that's how I basically learned my English. And um, of course, I learned the more of them while I was watching different animes and whatnot on the uh, subtitles. So yeah, and I heard that the English, for example, for foreigners like me. It's really hard language to learn. So, again, I'm not perfect in English and I have the thick accent, but I really hope that you won't, you know, remind me of having a thick accent because that is something that I cannot get rid of, sadly. <sighs> okay. I hope I won't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in the square. But even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. At mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up in the left side. The sign near the door said, Clubs. I was about to come closer, but the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. This is actually the girl that we are going after. I mean, this girl's route that we are completing in this series. I'm not going to complete any other routes. I know that I should. But I won't because otherwise if I complete all the routes here and record them all and everything, it will take me lots and lots and lots of hour and reading. Reading this through and whatnot. So this game is about medium length, which is which is about four 
30-40 hours uh, with the roots and whatnot, in my case at least. So I'm not going to spend 30 or 40 hours just to complete all the all the girls in this game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete on only Lena's road, only Lena's road route for her bad ending and good ending. We are aiming for good ending first and then the bad ending. But that's it. There, there will be no more no other girl routes after this until maybe later on I might take another route for fan dumping wise but for this route we are only going for Lena's so yeah her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering from the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow as soon as she saw me the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do. To approach the first or wait until she showed some initiative. Or maybe run away after all. Although this last option last option was constantly being suggested only by my self preservation instinct, at least. That's what I'd like to believe. And also, some of the people to know, I'm not the fastest reader out there. So, sadly, there are, you know, slower readers out there in the world. And I'd like to actually take my time to read this out. Because if I hastily read everything out, you won't be understanding even half of what you understand from my speech right now. You will maybe understand maybe 10% uh, at max if I will, you know, speed read this through. So I'd like to take my time, read the actual uh, narrative, narrative and uh, spoken lines. So I don't have to be all mumbled sometimes blah, 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 blah. that that just that doesn't fit fit me so if you if you're if you're looking for a fast paced reading game or something you should probably watch other other gamers to do that but i i rather take my time reading than you know just skipping past so yeah not the first human instinct, but far from the most logical. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the outcome would be pre predetermined, whatever. I cannot spell some words, sadly, even if I try, so... Some words I have to practice before spelling them out, so I'm sorry if this comes weird. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting to me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. So, suddenly somebody jumped out of nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright t-shirt with USSR written on it. Such a perfect reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from the distance, as and was probably younger than most pioneer girls. The one at the gates and this girl at the door of the clubs. At last, I decided to come closer. Um, but the USSR, I called her in my mind jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something while wildly waving her arms. The other girl in turn seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remaining silent. I will have probably continued to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket 
and started waving it in front of the first girl's face. This something turned out to be a grasshopper. I cannot do that was ugh. It's way too high pitched for me to do. Ugh, it already stops hurting my throat. Ah. The first girl squealed. I shall feel more like <laughs> She must not be too keen on instincts. As she easily rushed off towards the place where Lenin presumably made his speech about the workers and peasants revolution. That is to say, towards the square, the USSR glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not bad start for today. I have absolutely no clue where I am, and besides that, there are some kids here role-playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. I might, even, I might even be in a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seemed so real. If a little embellished. That I was starting to think that in fact, previous life would have been just a dream. And what am I supposed to do now? I was... Speaking at the crack, I was speaking at the crack, cracked paving stones with my shoe, and staring aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up, come up with some decision. That's when I recalled myself rolling on the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps. It's another instinct. When all energy whimpering and self pitying is used up, the body either goes hibernation or mobilizes its re reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option because out of the blue I found the determination to figure out what was going on. And in other, order to do that I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of representative of my own world. I followed the path to the left, on the right side of which the sm stood small cabins and apparently the homes of local pioneers. Actually they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I had never been part of its children's organizations near there the pioneers nor even younger October children. I imagined the daily life of typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake up call at 6 o'clock played by a siren, one minute to make your bed, then joining the formation at the drill square. That sounds more like an um, army for me. Or wait, could I be confusing it with something else? Yep, army. Suddenly something st st struck me on the back. I staggered but remained on my feet, turned around and prepared to fight heroically for my life. But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your chair up off the ground. I closed my mouth. <laughs> the same pioneer uniform. But the way she was wearing it looked, let's say, provocative. Like all the girls I met here, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her better. New here, are you? Uh, fine, see ya. She threw a threatening, threatening glaze at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing that never that the most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not 
give off the feeling of some deadly danger. As expect maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last I managed to make it to the square. There was no lenning or ar on an armored car, although one could easily expect something like that after all this had happened. Instead, however, a monument of certain comrade towered in the middle of the square. The letters on the pedestal read Kenda. Must be some big figure in the party. There were some small benches at the sides. It's quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyway? Ah, right. I decided to pretend to be a normal. So, to the right. Through a small grove. I came out at a pyre. I must have taken a wrong turn. Hey, wrong way! I turned towards the voice. <clears throat> I was drinking soda, mind you. Oh, that first girl, first, <clears throat> first girl stood before me. Now, what did I tell you? Take a left at the square, wasn't it? She had changed her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Oh. <clears throat> Ow! I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Lavia. Actually, my full name is Laviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. So, can you too? Um. Yeah. Still, I still feel a bit confused, so I could not come up with more meaning answers. And what's your name? Duh. It felt like she could see through me. Um, I, uh, yeah, um, Simeon. Nice to meet you, Simeon. Alright, I'm almost done here. Could you wait here a minute? I'm going to change and we'll go to Olga Dimitrievna together. Agreed? Agreed. After this Ah. <clears throat> After this exchange, she ran off. I sat on the pyre and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing heavy winter boots, but in such weather, there was nothing wrong in getting my feet, feet wet. Wet, I mean, wet. Furthermore, it let me cool myself a little. Looking at the river, I was brainstorming and processing everything that has happened. If this is some kind of conspiracy, it's a weird one. Even too friendly at times. No, it really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incomprehensible random event. Slavia? Slavia was standing beside me, dressed in the pioneer uniform again. Let's go. I've been here for a very short time, but all of the people I've met, she looks at least suspicious. But, however, this fact is already suspicious itself. We walk to the square. The USSR girl and the girl who hit me on the back were there, chasing each other. Is this some kind of game they're playing? Oliana, enough running. I'll tell everything to Olga Dimitrievna. Aye aye, Captain! I decided not to question Slavia for a while about what was going on or the local residents. Better meet him, better meet with this mysterious Olga Dimitrievna first. Sounds like she's past here. He walked past, past at the rows of most almost identical. Identical cabins, uh, some of which looked like a fat beer barrels, while others looked more like a household church. Finally, Slavia stopped in front of smallish one-story cabin. It looked like an artist's painting, the painted bed, 
chipping here and there with age was sparkling in the sun. The window shutters slid slightly ajar were swaying, swaying almost unnoticeably in the wind and a huge lilac bushes were growing at the sides. It seems as if this ramshackle hut was drowning into a storm of purple silk and the lilacs. Like some elemental force were inexorably destroying the troops leader's house. What are you standing around for? Let's go! Slavia snapped me out of my daydreaming. And stop teasing Lena already! Oh shish! Rena? Uh, <laughs> that's a little creepy. Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later, the door swung open and Uliana ran out and dashed past with the same mischievous grin. The big tailed girl came out next. Don't let it bother you, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful it's not Rena, at least. But I don't. Instead of finishing her sentence, she blushed quickly and headed towards the square. For some reason I felt like turning and following her with my eyes, but Slavia said, Come. We entered the cabin. Inside it looked like something similar to what I imagined. Two beds, a table, a couple chairs, a simple carpet on the floor, a wardrobe. Nothing special, but at the same time it felt like it felt home-like and cozy. Although this room was almost in the same state of disorder as my own flight. The girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. Nature had obviously gifted her with a pretty face and good body. Jeez. Thinking about body measurements now, hmm. At least one thing can keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. You're finally here! Excellent! My name is Olga Dimitrievna. I'm the camp leader. And nice to meet you. I'm Semyon. I decided to talk as if I wasn't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been expecting you since early morning. Uh, you've been expecting me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... And why do you need it? Oh, sorry. Why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? I guess I shouldn't ask direct, direct questions. The people here may react to them quite unlike how I'd prefer. And I doubt I get any answers. No reasons. Uh, just curious. By the way, uh, where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents to tell them I got here fine. For some reason I had a desperate idea if that if I played along I could find something out. Oh, but your parents called just an hour ago. Sent their regards to you. Now oh, that's a surprise. So can I call them? Cause I forgot to tell them something before I left. No. She gave a sweet, spontaneous smile. Uh, why not? We don't have a phone here. Uh, then how could my parents make a call to here? I've just come back to the district central town. I'll talk to them there. Uh, so that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. This, she kept the same smile. Why not? Because the next bus only comes in a week. I decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get here, there and back. I will get no answer anyway. 
Uh, all this time Slavia was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find you a uniform for you. I've got absolutely no desire to put on pioneer shorts to wear the ridiculous ne neck handkerchief. However, wearing winter clothes in summer isn't a great idea either. Right. Thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange someone wearing coat and winter boots in such a heat. Radio, I'll be off then. And you can get yourself acquainted, acquainted with the camp. <laughs> I like how uh, Olga says that radio. Radio! Don't forget to come in the dinner in the evening. Okay. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No, walked. It's not the right word. She rushed out. I ended up alone with Slavia. I must go too. Got things to do. Take a walk. Look around the camp a bit. See you in the evening. If there's no threat in catching to this and then catching to this and then this reality, as embodied by Slavia, becomes more and more appealing. For the first time today, I realized that it was awfully hot here. Although obviously my winter clothes were to blame for that, I took off my coat and dropped it into bed. My pullover followed it. I was now wearing only the shirt. <sighs> That's much better. All I could do now was follow their advice and go look around the camp. I'll try to find something out in the meantime. Um, okay, here is where I uh, actually stop. I'm going to save the game. Yes. And, um, yeah, I'll see you on the part three of Everlasting Summer in the nearby future. But for now, I'll see you later. Have a great one and bye bye.